Welcome to another Retro Reach Around joint. Today we're going to be reviewing the Sega Astro City Mini. I know you know this because you've clicked on the link, but before I review it, just want to say what the Astro City actually was. So it was a sit-down cabinet released by Sega in 1993. Quite a sleek looking thing. Basically you could swap out your arcade games uh, within it using the jammer capability and it looks very cool. However, looking at eBay, you can see if you want to get one of these, it's about $1,200, which is a whole awful lot of money. Very cool looking, but very large and a lot of money. If we were to compare that to the price of the Sega Astro City Mini, you can see this is costing £139.99. I'm sorry for uh, mixing up dollars and pounds there, but for your £139.99 in November 2022, you get 37 games, a 4-inch screen, a joystick, 6 buttons and a HDMI output. Now, when I purchased this, I also bought myself a little pad to go with it as well because I figured it's quite a small little uh, device and I, you know, I wanted a pad to go with it. So the extra pads cost me forty pounds. That was, that was a couple. This is like eighteen months since I bought it, but looking at eBay, it's the same price now. So here is the Sega Astro City Mini laid out on my living room carpet in all its glory. As you can see, it's quite a small form factor. You know, it's quite small. It's got that four-inch screen, but you can hear the sound coming out of it, which is quite nice. It's a very clear screen as well. It's got lovely little clicky buttons and a nice joystick there. I've obviously, as I alluded to before, I've got the joypad just because as soon as I'm going to connect this up to the TV, I basically want the joypad to play on. You can play with the joystick and buttons, but I wanted the joypad also for two-player activity. I wanted the joypad with it. So Virtual Fighting is playing quite nicely, but I need it on the big screen. Let's have a look at it on the big screen, plug it into the HDMI and get it on the TV. So this is Virtual Fighter from October 1993. I'll have played this early on in about 1994 at some Super Bowl or something like that, some bowling alley. Basically this game uses these really nice looking polygons. At the time this looked brilliant. It uses special fighting techniques that are actually realistic fighting techniques from all around the world. And it's got a brilliant Sega soundtrack, so a real, real good blast from the past, really enjoyed playing this one. When you turn on the console, basically you can choose one of 37 different games available, ranging from the early 1980s arcade games through to some more modern ones. Let's just have a look at a few random games from this selection, have a little review, see what they're like. This is Alex Kidd and the Lost Stars, released 10th of December 1986. Yeah, it's like a fun sort of quirky side scrolling game. Collect these stars. I'm absolutely hopeless as it. It's kind of cute. It's got a really jovial music, but in typical arcade fashion, it's absolutely nails, nails solid to play. Uh, my first experience with Alex Kidd was Miracle World on the Mass System, and quite honestly, I don't know how they actually culminated that in on the pack because it's super hard. Any kid playing it is going to get stressed out and quit straight away. Shinobi. It's like a side scrolling game, throwing your shurikens of the bad guys and getting through it. Fun game this, I had this on the Master System, it's really quite good. Upbeat sort of music, badass characters, yeah it's quite cool, you've got to save the hostages. Plays quite well but as standard I always say, arcade games are super hard. Alien Storm, sick game, I remember playing this on the Mega Drive, basically released in May 1990, it's got like, it's, it's actually multiplayer at the same time, but you're shooting up this alien streets and trying to get the alien scum off the off the streets. It's got like a side scrolling one, but it's also got like a running one where you're basically chasing chasing after like a vehicle or shooting all the stuff as you're going along. Bloody good fun actually, it's quite hard. There's loads of like special moves and stuff on it, like, special weapons should I say. There's also like a bonus stage I would say, sort of like a bonus stage like this. Basically shoot up the TV star, kill as many aliens as you can, get as many power ups as you can. It's brilliant when it's two player, but as usual, I'm always on my own playing these games. So basically, uh, yeah, it's class. What else? Yeah, Quartet 2. It's a bit of an old school 1986 game. You choose loads of characters and you go around basically trying to blast these aliens and whatnot. Terribly, terribly hard, but kind of cool little graphics and soundtrack at the time. Kind of a fun game. I guess this might be quite different, a bit more competitive if there's someone sort of playing playing with me uh, on this one, but it's not really my bag to be fair. Ultra Beast, pretty cool game, I mean, you know it's all Japanese. When this came out, this was revolutionary, in all honesty, I remember seeing this as a kid, really little kid. I think I see it on the Amiga, I thought wow that's brilliant, but if you play it like 35 years later you think actually this is pretty 
pretty pants really. You're playing as like a big burly bloke and you can change it to this, the altered beast and this this here is turned into like a werewolf. There's lots of different ones you can turn into. Turn into this werewolf. Uh, he's going to fight this bad guy, the end boss, and he's probably going to get knocked out in a minute because I'm not very good at these games. And basically, they've all got these patterns of format of patterns you have to do to beat him. And obviously, I'm going to get a bit head kicked in by this geezer dropping his heads on me. So I'm out. See ya. Come along and you actually get the power up. If you beat the sort of white sort of creature there, bam turn into this sort of monster and he can fly around a bit like it's probably some sort of reptile monster, I don't know what his name is, he emits electricity, basically he's double hard once he gets uh, his electricity power up. There's this game here called Cotton, Fantastic Night Dreams, Cotton, quite a fun sort of side scrolly sort of flying game, wacky Japanese, it's crazy stuff, but actually quite fun, as usual, really really hard, but of course they're all out there, these arcade games too basically exploit you and take all your money off of you. I actually quite enjoyed this one, it's quite weird quirky little graphics and lots of little ideas and, all that and stuff like that. So I actually quite like this, it's quite nice music as well, it's kind of, it's fun. Arabian Fight, released January 30th 1992, you can see it's that side scroller, side scrolling beat em up, it's got almost like a 3D tinge to it, really nice animation. Honestly, you see me get my head kicked in here, but actually it's really fun, it's quite a fun game really. It's got like a sort of depth perception and it's quite smart. These cool animations are one that I, I really enjoy playing this actually. Um, you can bang as many credits in as you want, so you can basically finish the game if you really want to. Obviously, this is my um, me playing and, well, pretty much summed it up, I'm not very good at it, but I do like it. I think with the multiplayer it'd be brilliant fun as well. It's quite a nice little 3D animation that. This is Flicky, this is the first release of the Sega character called Flicky. Basically got to go around and collect these little birds. You collect one bird and then you collect two, three, four, and you basically got to go through these exits. And you get to get all the little birds safe, and you don't want to get caught by like foxes and other bad like creatures that are trying to get you. Uh, quite a fun little sort of game. A lot of these I've just played through a little bit, they're not really up my street, so basically, you know, maybe maybe not for me, this console really, but the, I'd, most of them are quite, I enjoy the games, but there's a few of them that are like, half oh, they've been flicky. My Hero, played this on the, well it's called Seshu and Scandal, My Hero, and I played this on the Master System years ago, like 30 years ago, I thought, wow, this is a brilliant game, honestly, this is the original version, and like, it's nails hard, it's got this soundtrack that just drives you bloody mental. Um, and it's yeah, it's really really hard. Uh, I can't get very far on that. Space Harrier. Remember when I was a kid? I said nineteen ninety two, something like that. This was always in the arcade. Everywhere you went, Space Harrier had like quite a cool cabinet, and it was it was a hard game, but it was everywhere. Honestly, just Space Harrier everywhere. But I guess it was like obviously the arcades invested all the money in these massive cabinets. They want to get the most out of it. But yeah, it's a pretty cool game actually. It's really good. Good music. Great like the classic Sega music. Puyo Puyo, this is like a real fun sort of uh, Tetris-esque game, I've, this is a few levels into it and it started to get really fast, I always thought I was getting good at the game but clearly I'm not, uh, you can see it building up here and I'm like losing, every time you get, uh, you lose, basically the opposition drops all these bubbles on you and basically you've, if you're not performing very well, that's what happens, it all goes Pete Tong and you die, great game actually. This is what the hell is this one called? Ah, Princess Adventure. No, it's not Princess. It's Sega Ninja Ninja or oh, Ninja Princess. Yeah, released in 1985. You sort of press one of the buttons, she, she can go invisible. But it's sort of weird. You can't really shoot in. It's like up and you know, right or left or down. Shoot on the diagonal. It's quite a hard game. To be honest, I played it a little bit and I thought, oh, I'm not really feeling this. Like this, the princess is getting chased by all these geezers. Um, not really. Up, it's, I don't really like it particularly. Kind of. Kind of fun, I guess, but not really up my street. Look at her going invisible, and then she gets hit by something with a knife. Game over, standard, absolutely nails. So, this is Cyber Police ESWAT. Remember seeing this, like Mega Drive or something like that, in the early 90s, thinking that oh, looks quite cool. So, this is obviously the original arcade version. Nice side scroll, though, good animation, and good sound. Kind of fun. These are geezer on his skateboard, and you just shoot him off of it. Basically throughout the game your aim is to get your big power up so you can actually um, turn into like this sort of cyber mechanised uh, thing, like really hard sort of geezer. And then you, once you've got like, you've got like a, a machine gun so you can take out 
people like, like this might like, here we go. Look, he's got this massive thing. Basically you get shot and a bit more of your armor falls off and whatnot. But yeah, it's pretty I quite enjoyed this game actually. Yeah, it's good, like nice graphics. Shadow Dancer, I don't think my video does the justice here, but he's got this fucking big wolf type thing which you can send off and uh, basically send to attack the other people shooting at you. You send the wolf in, the wolf gets shot, or takes try grabbing the geezer's leg like you see there, and he gets shot and dies. And eventually it'll spawn back as like a tiny little wolf. There you go, it's come back. And when that when that wolf gets bigger then it can fight again. He is a bad guy. Follow the positions and you, you can kill him or you use this like magic power and you take him out like that. And he's got this like bonus stage, there's a shuriken bonus stage. I think it looks quite nice actually, it's sort of almost like a digitized vibe, throwing these shurikens up there, sort of taking out people coming down. There you go, boom, 100%. This is Radmobile, released in 1991. I just played this for a little bit, it's actually quite nice sort of graphics, it does definitely look like them arcade cabinets or so back in the early 90s sort of whizzing around nice nice sort of just this nice music sort of fast and fast paced to see Sonic there dangling around like a mascot in the car and then when you hit like a hit a bump or hit a car on coming she's like look you're actually taken out and it looks like bam you're taken off the road I think it looks quite smart lovely looking graphics really for the time that is actually isn't it? nice music although it's sort of the road is floating in the middle of the air I don't quite know how that works keeps going it's like the moon and it's tipping up I don't really think it's very realistic but uh, yeah it's pretty sick really Crackdown I don't know if this video really does justice but basically you've kind of got to go around this complex shoot people and then blow the complex up basically you're trying to, I think I think you're basically trying to shoot a load of crack dealers up which can only be a good thing really can't it yeah take them up take them out go and shoot them up Multiplayer, two at the same time, but I've obviously I've got no one to play with. He's going there, whack all these mud, these suckers, plant your bomb, and blow the bloody place right up to, to Kingdom Come. Nice music, nice graphics, nice little simple graphics really. Boom, taking it out. Next. So next game we're going to play here is Golden Axe. Golden Axe, released in 1989. Now I played this a lot on the Mega Drive or the Genesis in America, if you want to call it that. Basically it's a side-scrolling sort of beat em up where you basically go through like this sort of like Rastan sort of era type thing, you know, Conan the Barbarian-esque time, time period. Basically beating up all the bad guys, using like big power-ups, using your sword. There's different characters, you can jump on the back of these sort of animals and sort of beat the crap out of people. Uh, these ridiculously oversized sort of sprites. It's a good fun. Good fun. It's a button basher at times. As you can see, I'm getting my head pummeled in here, but it's quite fun. You got these magic spells you can collect and use, which cause a lot of damage on the opposition. Jump on the back of uh, these animals as well, which is kind of cool as well. It always sort of struck me as all this kind of disproportionately sized. It just looks a bit cumbersome jumping on the back of it. Yeah, quite nice little animation. You got this sort of mini mini dragon things blow some little atomic bomb things up and take everyone out and jump on the back of this dragon thing and burn them all. Yeah, class that. Look at that go. Following on we've got Golden Axe 2 Revenge of Death Adder released in 1992. This is a bit of a special one. It's an exclusive game to the Astro City Mini. Basically it's never before been released. As you can tell, better improved graphics, got sort of this multi-layer action going on. It's really cool sound effects. Both have got really good sound but this is like really sort of stepped it up a bit. As you can see, that disproportionate thing jumping on the back of that massive dragon bug thing. It seems a bit weird, but anyway, it's good. It's a uh, good fun, nonetheless. Alright, so I'm going to try and summarise this very quickly. I've got a bad habit of waffling on. Alright, so pros. Yeah, really cool styling of this. It looks like the authentic Astro City, but in a mini scale. It's got these authentic looking decals on it. It's got a simultaneous two player action. Should you buy a second pad and plug it in, you can both play together in some of these games together, which is class. The joystick and buttons are very high end quality. In other words, feel really good. Even though they're small, they feel really well. They feel really good. There are some brilliant titles on this, including Virtual Fighter and the exclusive Golden Axe 2. Golden Axe 2 was never re never released on any, any home console or anything like that. It's got a very clear LCD screen with excellent overall build quality, and you can purchase extra peripherals like the control pad, the arcade stick, and, and even a chair that could come with it. Now, don't expect 
the peripherals such as the arcade stick to be cheap because I've seen some absolutely ludicrously priced stuff out there over like two hundred dollars or two hundred quid for one of these arcade sticks, but they look pretty cool. Cons cost. I bought one of these for hundred and seventy quid, including import tax. That was like nearly two years ago now, and you can get them for about one hundred thirty nine ninety nine now as well. So it's a lot cheaper, but it's still quite expensive. It's got a lot of unusual titles on it, including columns, three you know three versions of columns, two Puyo Puyo games on it, which are fun, but why do you need five of these games on it? And some games are menus and titles in Japanese, some are purely in Japanese as well, such as Shadow Dancer, so if you, if you like the Japanese styling, I, mean, it's, I, like, I don't mind it, I like the authentic vibe, I like that, but some people, if you can't read the words, they might struggle or whatever. Uh, it's also very easy to pump cash into, effectively you get free credits, you're never going to get good at the game because you just keep pumping credits in. Would I buy one of these? If I was not interested in collecting games consoles, well, it is probably not. Maybe I'd get a second-hand one, but ultimately I've got I bought it brand new. I enjoyed it. Have a few beers, played it. I've actually played it numerous times, and quite frankly, I've enjoyed playing it. Maybe if I was getting a second-hand one, maybe that'd be more like it. Uh, if I was just a casual sort of gaming type person, um, maybe for like eighty quid, seventy quid, I would advise it. But maybe hundred and forty quid, you maybe don't want to be spending that. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please consider subscribing. I'll try and get another video made sooner than like 18 months or whatever it is it takes me usually to do. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. Ta-ra. Bye.